So we're going to go to the northeast of North Minneapolis and do the Johnson and the Broadway lines. First Johnson Street Northeast. And here's the track map. And so Johnson Street Northeast, of course, came through downtown on Hennepin across the river and then went out East Hennepin to 8th Street Southeast, down 8th Street Southeast to 10th Avenue, which by the way was Highway 36 back in the day until they built I-35W. Uh, and a little jog on that and then straight up Johnson Street to 33rd Street. So, you know, we've kind of covered downtown already in Nicollet Island. So here we are exiting Nicollet Island and entering the old St. Anthony neighborhood. This is a pretty nice one. And any, any picture with a big grain belt beer sign in it can't be all bad. Uh, we have the Huddle Cafe, which is kind of cool. And what is this? Uh, Cream's Furniture. All right. And even though this is an Oak Harriet car, it is on the on the same tracks used by um, the Johnson line. And it has just turned from 4th Street Southeast on to Hennepin. <clears throat> and this is the same intersection viewed from the other direction. Um, this is another Ed Nelson photo and he's on a car that was either coming in from Central Avenue or coming in from, uh, uh, from Johnson Street. And here you see the Como Harriet car turning onto Fourth Street. And so we don't have any photos of it going out that stretch of East Hennepin, but then it came down 8th Street Southeast and this is it turning onto 10th Avenue, which as I mentioned was Highway 36. Note that this is car 1775 which was the second car uh, for the Minnesota Rail Fans Association last day excursion, 1300 being the other one. And it went about a block and a half and passed under the Great Northern Railroad. So we're up on the Great Northern uh, overpass. And I love the brick street with the classic Belgian block in the track area. <laughs> And here's a view of that from ground level with a great northern train going overhead. So here you can see it angles and then turns north onto, uh, onto Jackson Street, I mean, onto Johnson Street. Oops. <clears throat> now, once you got north of East Hennepin, there were uh, two underpasses of the uh, Northern Pacific. And uh, this first one was for the Minneapolis and Duluth line. This was the line that went uh, out along New Brighton Boulevard and then all the way across Roseville and eventually up to White Bear Lake. And this location right now is smack in the middle. Well, no, this isn't in the middle, but uh, I-35 is just off to the left, the big canyon of I-35. So this line was broken a while ago. But this shows you the sort of classic one third down, two thirds up for grade separations in Minneapolis. And then in the distance, a couple, three blocks up is the Northern Pacific B line, which is the main line that bypassed downtown Minneapolis. Now this is back about a block at Winter Street. And you may not know it, they're still there, but there were three little streets uh, the parallel to East Hennepin, winter, spring, and summer street. There's no fall street. <laughs> Nobody knows why they ran out of room. This is a newspaper photo. As you can see, something has gone wrong here. And the streetcar is squeezing by. Missing part of its door. And as a matter of fact, yeah, you're right. Your you're streetcar right. has been hit here uh, because here's the emergency truck from... Uh, probably East Side Station that's come to help clear things up. I wonder if the car drove through there while passengers were loading car. or unloading through that door. Why do I think this was an interchange collision? And uh, the car was coming across, got knocked kitty wumpus, and the streetcar went this far past the intersection before it stopped. And then um, I got two photos here from the uh, grade separation construction album. Um, if you remember, there was the bridge in that previous photo going under the B line. This is the grade crossing before they built that bridge. 
with the little signal tower with uh, the flag man in there who had manual gate controls and they had to have somebody here 24 hours a day to manually open and close these gates. And so uh, this is looking from that other bridge, the Minneapolis and Duluth Bridge, looking north and they've torn up the streets and they've got the temporary track in to shoe fly around the bridge construction. And then once you get north of Broadway, there was kind of a, there was a, a big open area up there. Uh, and there was, <clears throat> there was a, a, a gravel quarry. As a matter of fact, the shopping center that's in there now is called the Quarry Shopping Center. And this area was vacant for a long, long time, but uh, Twin City Lines had a gravel spur that went into this area to uh, get gravel for the use for their use and you'll notice this is an earlier photo because the johnson line is uh, paired with kenwood not with bryant this is another photo out in that area i don't know exactly which street and there's something has gotten in the way this is a newspaper photo so everything is backed up And um, so you run along the flats until you get to 18th Avenue Northeast, and that's where you start to climb the hill. Because if you recall, Johnson Street is, is up on a pretty good hill in Northeast. So this is the climb up the hill. And this is uh, 31st and Johnson, uh, two blocks short of the end of the line. You know, photos on Johnson are really pretty rare, except we got a bunch of them at the Y at the end, which is where the trolley fans. And so my question here is what happens with this dog after the people get on the car? <laughs> he goes home and waits. Maybe so. Maybe this is. Um, and so you may remember this photo. I, I ran it as a cover shot on Twin City Lines. And I got to tell you, I love this photo. This is where there was a motorette driving it, and some kids, maybe these guys, had put stones in the in the frog of the track, and it derailed the car. It went through the center of the corner store and came to a stop here. She got it stopped. Well, and as you can see, car stop is a very meaningful sign in this case. But look <laughs> at these guys. You know, don't they? Go. And you can tell they've all been riding their bikes because their right hand jeans. Rolled, are rolled up. up. Oh, sure. Yeah. Which, which, which was the thing back then. Yep. But it's like they're tell, tell me this the guy isn't saying, "Yeah, I did that." Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. And everybody's out. You see, you know, um, all the ladies, all the housewives. You know, uh, it's just pretty cool. And the mailbox used to be up on the curb, and it isn't anymore. So. And, and the fire hydrant seems to be laying on its side. I don't. Yeah. Know. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Any kind of water here. It's funny uh, the water's not spurting out of there. No. And so anyway, then we have a shot on the Y, uh, which is on the side street. Um, so that's that's it for the Johnson line. I wish I had more. It's one of those Hollywood things. There's no reason the water should come up out of a hydrant because the valve is way down. That's what the the, the knob on the top yeah, is. Yeah, you're right. Down. So what a party poop. It over, okay. <laughs> but in Hollywood, of course, that's what happened. <laughs> it should only happen if the fireman who last used it had turned out and left the, the nozzle on, which would fill the pipe and the hydrant with water. That the could red happen. Red. Sure. So anyway, the next is a Broadway crosstown. Um, Twin City Lines only had two crosstowns that didn't actually go downtown. Um because uh, the big cross town, Selby Lake, turned into a downtown oriented route when you went to St. Paul. The Dale Street line in St. Paul, once it got to the bottom of Dale Street, made a dog leg and went to downtown. And the Franklin Avenue line, which ran across South Minneapolis, made a dog leg and went to downtown. So only Snelling Avenue and Broadway were the real cross towns. And it was built in 1914 and it was kind of using pieces of track and tying them together. So it started out just short of Broadway, I mean, just short of Broadway and Central uh, on about three little blocks of track. And then it used the Monroe line up to 13th, new track across the river to Washington. 
used existing track to Broadway and Morgan, made a little jog on Morgan, and then up 19th Avenue, which we know today is Golden Valley Road, up to up to Upton, up to Upton. Wow. Okay. Um, and you know, lightly traveled line, but it still they still had pretty good service, and it was the last place that cars one and two, the former Stillwater lightweights, had a regular assignment, along with some of the other lightweights. They used full-size cars on this periodically. This is the Y at Jackson Street on the east end. Uh, you can see the big grain elevator up here. And I think this thing is just now being um, turned into residences. Pretty sure that's the case. And so uh, this is around the corner and you're looking east and now the line stopped one block short of Central Avenue. And the reason I think was that Central Avenue was an elevated um, intersection over, uh, over the railroad tracks. And so I think they figured that was just too much hassle to have streetcars in the middle of that busy intersection. So we'll stop the line here and if someone wants to transfer to Central, they can just walk up the hill. Now, this was on the occasion of the very last day of this line, oh, come on, um, which is when they took uh, the third car, number four, which had been double-ended and became the spare car for the Fort Snelling shuttle. And the Minnesota Rail Fans Association took it out for one last fan trip over the Broadway line. So you wind up, there were originally four of these lightweights, numbers one and two lasted on this line, Number four was on the shuttle. Number three had already been scrapped. And so this is number uh, number one, I think. It's either one or two. Um, and it is on the ramp up to Central. And you can see the track ends right beyond it. So it's gone through the Y and it's laying over, getting ready to go back. Um, this is uh, one of the big standard uh, lightweights. And this is the was the longtime headquarters for Minneapolis Public Schools. Schools, yeah. Central Avenue is right up there. And here is number one again. It's about to go into the Y by the That's public the schools thing. building. Yeah. And now we're back at Logan Park. Remember, I had those color photos of the uh, Monroe and the Broadway car going by the park. That's where this is. So now we're on Thirteenth Avenue Northeast. Oh. Crossing 2nd Street, which was the connection with the 2nd Street line. And we got two kind of blurry photos here, but they're the only ones we have of it passing through the Grain Belt Brewery complex. And it's narrowed down to one track here because it had to cross the, uh, the, the Northern Pacific Spur that went down to Graco and went down to the lumber yard by Plymouth. This would be this would be um, Marshall Street, right up here. And now we're back further, and you can see there's actually a train going across there, and the tracks have widened back out to uh, two tracks. Now the reason that they were on Thirteenth Avenue is that this is the east end of the Broadway Bridge, and it dumped out into Thirteenth. It did not immediately apparently dump down into Broadway. I'm not sure when the Broadway entrance uh, was improved. Now, what I know in later years is that they raised this bridge when they opened up the, uh, the Minneapolis uh, North Harbor Terminal because they had to get more boats under it. And so it looked completely different. There was this, this thing, the 13th was done away with completely. And part of that bridge is now over on Nicollet Island there. That's correct. Connecting Nicollet Island with uh, Main Street. Okay. And, and this is car 2000, which was the very first lightweight in 1916. And it was that two car train with 2000 and 2000 A, which became 2001. And they were the only lightweights that were built with the deck roof. And so uh, in 1927, they uh, kind of upgraded them to look like the other lightweights, except they didn't get rid of the deck roof. Here's a pretty good picture of the Broadway Bridge which interestingly has a wood area. It appears to be a wood deck. Yeah, they only recently replaced that thing. Yeah, because I think this one also wound up with one of those metal grid decks in it. Yeah, you're right. And then there's Greenbelt in the background. 
here's that fan trip. Uh, they let people off to take pictures of it on the Broadway Bridge. And now we've come off the Broadway Bridge, cross under, crossed under the Northern Pacific and the Sioux Line Railroads, and then come up and we're at Second Street. And I don't know really why they went down to a single track. They didn't have another railroad to cross here, but they went down to a single track for a short distance for some reason. And here's that same location um, after they uh, closed the bridge to take the tracks out of it for a while. Now, this is Washington Avenue, and the Broadway tracks are in the foreground. And this is a rare car. This is um, the 28th Avenue South North Emerson line, and it's turning from Washington onto Broadway. Now, here's the deal. All the, um, the, the Penn Avenue and Fremont Avenue North cars, and I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to go way back to the map because I got to explain this to you. Be back in a minute. There, well, there we go. Okay. Until about 1925, the Fremont Emerson line and the Penn Avenue line came down to Broadway and then they went over and used Washington to get into town. In about 1925, they built this shortcut down Emerson and then North 7th Street to get to downtown. And when that did, they went and put the cars on 8th Street through downtown. Okay, there was still a demand for service from Emerson down Washington to the other end of downtown. And so the 28th Avenue South Line was routed through and up Emerson to 36th, um, to 36th. And that continued um, with full service until World, until World War II when they cut it back to rush hour only. And so this was a rare rush hour only line in the system. And uh, they were down to like three rush hour trips per rush hour when it finally they finally quit running these cars up Emerson and via Washington in oh, 1950. And so uh, this is Ed Nelson who went out to record these things, recording one of the last uh, Washington to Emerson cars. However, the Broadway line did continue to Robbinsdale, did continue up Washington and took the corner on Broadway and shared the tracks with the Broadway Crosstown all the way to Broadway and Morgan. Plus this, uh, plus the cars coming deadheading out of Washington, uh, pardon me, deadheading out of Northside Station would come down to Washington and head west to go and uh, deadhead to their respective routes. Okay, so uh, this is looking west from just about the west side of I-94 right now. And there was one landmark that is still in place and that is Friedman's department store. It is still there, they sell shoes. And um, some of these buildings are still around, a lot of them are gone. And now this is looking the other way from, I believe, du uh, from around Lindale. Yeah, this is around Lindale looking uh, east. You got the nor north side Mercury dealer. This is the corner of Broadway and Emerson. And so this was the busiest intersection for streetcars in North Minneapolis. Uh, they had a, a regular um, inspector, a supervisor stationed here. This is where they made the reliefs from Northside uh, Station. They had to, and it was really kind of a hassle. They had to go a half a mile south from Northside Station down to Washington and then get a half a mile west uh, to here. And that took either two streetcars or somebody driving you or a long walk. Uh, it was, but this is where they made all their reliefs. And you can see there's a lot of special work here. This is a block west. This is the intersection of Fremont and Broadway. What's going on at the Firestone dealer? Wow. Okay, that's, <laughs> you know, I had not <laughs> noticed that. Wow. Tire sale. No, that, that whole block. Yeah. Whole block. yeah look at their back up all the, all the way. They're probably tired. I hadn't noticed that. 
Yeah, they, they do go back half a block, maybe more. Yeah, there's people back here. Yeah. Huh. Something, something else. Yeah, Some, maybe it's not Firestone, but something more neighborhood-wide. Good question. Hmm. Okay. And uh, this is a newspaper photo recounting an accident, but it, it, it's the only one I found that gives me a picture of that of that S curving section of Broadway that is west of um, about Gerard or Humboldt. Uh, it bends around, oh, and so uh, this was shared with, by the Broadway line, the Penn Avenue line, and the Robbinsdale line. We're all on this track. Now this is after streetcar. Well, I guess there is still streetcar service. So this would be before 1953. The Penn mm -hmm. Avenue cars were still using this, this is even, kind of even though the others were gone. And this is the corner of Broadway and Morgan. This is where, once again, Broadway kind of makes a big sweeping curve and heads northwest. And in the foreground are the tracks of the Broadway Crosstown uh, headed down a short block to get to Golden Valley Road. And then this is on the hill on Golden Valley Road. I think it's at Sheridan. I think these apartments are still there. And then he pulled into the Y at uh, Upton. And that's this one. 